Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keyboard YouTube channel. It is Francesco here and I'm very lucky today to be diving into Basecamp, which is a project management application. We're going to be reviewing the full experience and what it offers, as well as giving you an idea of whether this is best suitable for you and your team. Now Basecamp is in its third version and it has two main plans. I don't normally talk about pricing before, but I always think it's sort of beneficial to know what you're sort of getting with your plans. They do have somewhat of a free plan, but somewhat of a full paid plan. And it is a bit more expensive than the others, but I'll explain why it actually benefits in the long term if for a moment. So they have Basecamp Business, and as you can see, $99 per month, which is quite a high amount. A lot of people will go, wow, actually, okay, that's quite a lot. But with that plan, you get unlimited projects, unlimited users, and no per user fee. So in comparison would say another project management application which charges like $9 per month per user, it doesn't grow with the amount of people you have. So for example, if you have more than 10 or 15 people, it might actually be more cost effective in the long run in comparison with some of the other pricing plans. However, again, watch this video to find whether it's more suitable for you. And as you can see, it has up to 500 gigabytes storage plan which is fairly reasonable for you to store everything and even things externally, as well as clients. We'll touch on the client experience near the end of this video, but they also do have something called Basecamp Personal, which we've done a review on if you want to check out fully, but it, it's like a, a, a condensed version of this. It gives you one gigabyte storage, 20 users and three plans. So this might be better if you're more sort of a solo user or uh, even as he said, families are using this in terms of planning. However, you can also, you know, get a good start with it, work out whether it's for you before actually committing to the more sort of the business associated stuff. Now, Basecamp believes that they're trying to save you money on all of the other experiences, trying to replace Slack, Asana, all of the sort of other G Suite as well. But what I want to do is is sort of overview how it works and, and how it operates. So you have a better idea when it comes to making a decision. So as you can see here, this is a base camp. And as you can imagine, it's currently on the web version. I believe they do have a Mac, Windows, iOS and Android app that runs quite well. But as you can see, it's, it's different as a first look compared to other applications. This is your homepage. And here are all your projects that you're working on in front of you. And you can see your assignments and schedule over here. So as you can imagine, uh, I can enter a project and I can start inviting some people but I could also start a message board. This is for updates and announcements, essentially trying to replace the likes of maybe Slack or um, the comments system that you have inside, say, Asana. To-dos uh, in terms of what you need to get done. Documents in terms of attaching things that are internal and external, you know, internal PDFs to external Figma documents. And Campfire, which is a great place to chat about more random stuff <laughs> that may uh, naturally incur. And you can also see upcoming dates that may affect your project as well as automatic check-ins so you can ask recurring questions so you don't have to pass to team members about it. And down here, any project updates that may uh, be suitable. So let's go on to do's just to give you an example what this sort of to-do list experience is like. For example, here I can add a to-do like in this case, I need to brief animators as a next thing to do. You can attach a file or just add it to the list straight away. And as you can see here, it automatically sort of gives you sort of an, another to do to do. But you can see whether this is completed or in progress. And I'd go back to my to do's. You can see that task there and you can view it in different ways. You can view it as a card if you want to. And you can sort of add even subtasks as well, as well as more details. And you can even add it to certain groups up here. You can bookmark it which I'll come to in a minute. And you can track it on this hill chart if you want to, the progress of it. And you can click update if you want to adjust the position of the progress. So just a small thing, a small update on that, but uh, just something quite cool. As you can see, you can remove the hill chart settings there. But as you can imagine, you can be able to track progress on to-dos using that. So to-dos are a great way to be able to sort of allocate some tasks to get working on. And one of the ways that you can see it is this new feature called lineup, which is something that they've allowing you to see a project based on a timeline. So if I go back to home and I go to Bento and I click in here, I should be able to add a due date up here actually to the actual project. So in this case, if I go add a start date, 
say start tomorrow and finish this on in March and save. You can go over to lineup and you can start to see that this project is spanning across those that time period. So lineup, if you have multiple projects, is quite a nice little sort of zoom out what you're working on, what's ending soon, what's being progressed in one view. And that's fairly nice to have at a glance. Now, if I go back over to home and then go into Bento again, you can see the docs is fairly easy. You can see here that I, what I can do is actually can start a new document. So it actually has internal document creation, which might save you on the likes of Google Docs. Uh, you can also create and upload files from any sort of format and also have imports or link files from applications like Adobe Creative Cloud, Figma, iCloud Drive, Notion, etc. So that you don't miss out on anything that might not be suitable for you. And you can download the full folder at the end, which is perfect more for you know, people that you want to just be able to collect everything that's part of that project, especially beneficial for client relations and things like that. You've also got this message board where you can post an, an update. We announced a logo and uh, what you can do is maybe even add a photo of that. And I'm going to post this message. And you can see here that that gets posted to the group and other people can communicate with that. And you can see it in different sort of roundups. You can see Things that are like pitches, questions, and things like that, you can narrow it down, which is quite nice. So message board is a nice place. One thing I really like is it sort of previews it here. And campfire is sort of a good example of that. You can create events, events and schedule. So if you want to create a new event up there, you can. Now, the best way to demonstrate this is actually seeing a sample project. And this is really what it looks like when it's in full use. Over on this left hand side, you can see people's updates and how to interact and who's posting in the campfire, which is more of sort of like a live chat to some extent. And you can see any schedule items that are coming up and you can tick them off as well. And you can see who's involved in specific engagements. So it's really neat. You can also get automatic check-ins. So this is a way to be able to see whether you have any future ideas for the team and people can post their concepts and, and things like that. But it's a way for you to get the ball rolling with conversations without necessarily having to commit to specific plans. Now, if I go to home, I showed you sort of project concepts. You can see here that anything that comes up in your schedule will appear on this bottom uh, panel here. Now, pings up here is a way to automatically private chat with somebody so you can get the ball rolling on a certain fix. Hey is where you get all of your notifications. Activity is where you can see what the hum of the company is, whether there's going to be any to do's added, where is it overdue to do's that there? Somebody else's work in your team that you might want to tune in on. For example, if you're a manager and you see that somebody's been stuck on a project for a while, you can might be able to help them out. Now, one thing I really like in my stuff is the sort of uh, my assignments areas where you can uh, see some progress you're making. My bookmarks, which is perfect for saving little elements, uh, whether that's documents, to do's, files or information throughout that you might want to come back to later, but it's very personalized for you. It doesn't disrupt anybody else. You can see your schedule on its own, your drafts, which is nice, and recent activity and things like that. And over on the right hand side, you can actually find specific things that are across your Basecamp account. Now, as you can see, I'm on 30 days of the trial of the Basecamp, and you can see here that I can upgrade my plan. Now, as you can see, there is a monthly plan. And as I said, it gives you up to 500 gigabytes, but they also have a yearly plan which bumps you up to one terabyte storage total and also gives you two months free on this plan and one year money back guarantee if you don't find it suitable, which is crazy, really, because <laughs> if you found that somebody got to day 300, uh, 364, then you could cancel, but mental, really. And they say that up to 120,000 teams have joined Basecamp and have upgraded already. So it's already being used by quite a, a fair amount of people. Now, this is really designed for remote and async work. So it's much more suitable for those teams who are more globally based and that don't necessarily micromanage their team as much or don't find the need to because their work is much more sort of orientated towards much more natural communication with other people. However, it's really a, a different experience to a lot of the other project managers. In other project managers, you get much more flexibility of views. In my opinion, this is much more suited for those who have been able to play around with it and commit to it. 
versus those who have come from uh, project management applications that really want to stick with that traditional setup. There is a lot of pros to having this experience. It's a lot more sort of hands off. However, it doesn't give you that sort of uh, original flexibility of views that you would tend to have with other applications. So that's just something to know. And also they do have a, a client like experience. So you can go and find it on the Got Clients page. But for example, if you want to share externally with the client, you can allow the client to see what progress you're making with certain areas. And what's really nice is they can comment and feedback, which reduces meetings and also allows them to give it feedback that uh, relates to the project and see different versions. And they can grab all the files without them having to ask, which is really nice. And you can actually connect it to your email so that it, whenever you post something in the actual thread inside of Basecamp, it will actually forward to the client. So you're not chopping and changing and going to email quite often. I've actually used this weirdly for client work only a couple of times with, when I was doing like freelance sort of branding and, and marketing. And I was actually fairly impressed with how it worked because it found uh, the other person on the other side found that it was easier to be able to stop nudging them and see everything and make progress on the project without constant emails. So I actually found it quite easy to use, although it has changed a bit since Basecamp 2, which I was using, but probably for the better. And as you can imagine, probably more suitable. Now, again, they do have the versions that you can download and you can see here is iOS, Android, Mac, PC, and etc. So I'm probably only viewing it on the web version. So it's not as necessarily fine tuned as many people would expect. You can have admin land as well, where you can go and change your different sort of uh, the settings for you and your teams, who's the administrating. And one thing that's quite nice as well is they do have turn on focus mode. So you can block notifications. You can see that you're focusing and other people will get that notification as well and out of office. So you can really indicate that you're out between specific dates. This is something that actually apps like Twist have, but this is nice because it it fully commits you when people see that card so that you're really confidently out of office. Again, you can add more teams as well. This is something I didn't um, sort of touch on and you can have project templates as well, which you can actually create yourself, which might save you a bit more time um, getting things set up. Lineup is a fairly new feature, but um, something that will save you a bit of time connecting things up. And yeah, that was an overview of Basecamp. It's available on all of those devices. You can find it through Basecamp.com. The link will be in the description. From the people who have used it, they found it to be one of the better places to manage their team, especially remote and async. And you can find all the details below. Hopefully you found this video useful and whether it gave you a bit of insight about whether Basecamp is suitable for you. Feel free to leave any comments of your particular situation or email me directly and I'll be happy to help. And there's always that Basecamp personal plan, which might be more suitable for smaller team members. Anyway, folks, <laughs> a huge thank you for stopping by. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.